Um, so I'm just going to begin by asking you how you sort of uh, became acquainted with this screenplay and what it was about this script that really attracted you to this project. The unusualness of the script, the fact that, you know, normally you read the script and, you know, that is like the tenth version of this film and the one hundredth version of the other film and, you know, it's very formatted and, you know, the, from the first page you, are gonna, you know what is going to happen at the end. And here, you know, I was reading and I was like, wow, and wow, oh, oh, you know, so, so it was extremely surprising. Surprising. It was uh, talking about, you know, this fantastic world of Jerry, that it that was no description really in it. It was just fantastic. So for me, it's like, a, you know, it is like giving a huge playground to a kid, you know, you can do whatever you want. And I was like, yeah, I can do whatever I want. Then, you know, this surprise of being so much um, in empathy with the serial killer, to like this guy, you know, to have, to understand him, even to have sympathy for him, and then the cat. This feisty cat, I love him. Because <laughs> I mean, of course, Ryan does the voices for, for the for the animals. But was that so was that the plan all along? Because I read that you were sort of wanting to hire voice actors first, but then he persuaded you otherwise. Yeah, no, it was you know it was like a general idea for me for the producer, you know, and the producer they wanted big names because you know the more famous people you have on the poster and the better it is. But nothing was really convincing. And one day, you know, I received you know these voices. And uh, I listened to them and I'm like, wow, this is cool. So who is that? It's me. So Ryan proposed. And then you think about it and it's, it was extremely dumb from all of us from the beginning to think about having another actor because that is the voices that he's hearing. So who else but him can do these voices? So, you know, obviously it could not be anybody else but him. And it's a testament to him as well that I didn't know it was him until the credits came up at the end. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We didn't see say it in the beginning, yes. And it's a, it's a brilliant performance from him. And it is, it's a bit different to what we've usually seen him do. I mean, do you think he's a better actor than people give him credit for? Because this is a really quite an incredible performance, really. You know, Ryan suffers from the same symptom as many beautiful women. You know, she's a beautiful, so she must be stupid, you know. But, you know, in the world, it doesn't work like that. You have some people that are beautiful and smart and funny and some people that are ugly and stupid and poor. And then you have some very ugly people that are very smart and some very beautiful people that are very dumb. You know, you have all sorts of configuration. So for people, you know, he's tall. He's a photo model. He's the husband of Blake Lively. No, no, no. So he must, he should not be this talented, but the guy is over talented. What can I tell you? But, you know, he's like a Ferrari and people, they, they, they drive him like if it was a bike. It doesn't work, you know, if you have a Ferrari, you have to drive him like a Ferrari. He is over talented. He's really, he's really great. So, no, no, I think he's a great actor. He can do anything. If you trust him and let him explore everything that he has, he's just the greatest. And, yeah. And talking of great actors, of course, uh, Gemma and Anna are both excellent. How did you sell this movie to them? Did you sort of say to them, you're going to be severed heads inside a fridge? Oh, they read the script before, right. so they knew it. They knew it. And both of them, they were very much excited to make the film. And, you know, I was, I thought that both of them, they were great actresses. I loved them both, you know, from before. You know, you always have this dream. Until now, I always had a dream cast and I always managed to have my dream cast. Any person that I wanted to work with, until now, I could work with. So I must have some, as much, I, yeah, I think maybe the actors, they like me or something, but <laughs> it works. Uh, I mean, because some people are labelling this film as a, as a comedy, but I found this to be really sad. Would you would you call this quite a, an upsetting movie? It is sad. It mm. is a very, you know, the life of the main character, Jerry. He has a miserable life. I mean, what is the life of this poor guy? He is, has a psycho mother and he's a psycho himself. He spent his childhood in mental hospital. Finally, he has a job and then his whole life goes to hell. It's extremely, deep down, is extremely sad. And that is what I like because it's at the image of life, you know. Life is not always happy, always horrible, always like this. It, it has many layers. But I'm very happy that you say that because I I think it's a very sad movie at the end. Yeah. And just finally, I mean, I was just wondering what's next for you now and if you plan on kind of remaining in, in Hollywood or at least in the English language for your next project. Well, my, really, my biggest dream in my life would be to, to work in the UK because I love the British actor. You know, all the second role in my film, they, they all come from the UK, all of them. I think the quality is of the, you know, the level of the play of the actors is incredible. I love the humor. And uh, now I have a project that is, you know, a little piece of it is in England, but I would love to make a, a film in the UK. Message in the bottle. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today. <laughs> thank you. We'd be, we'd be very pleased if you made a movie over here, I can tell you that.
You yeah, should. hopefully. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice.